How's it going guys? Gory Plans 344 here and hey, would you look at that? An actual real life deck profile. Who would have seen this coming? Not me because the last time I've done this has been like years ago, honestly. Oh my gosh, it, it has definitely been a hot minute. But um, here we are. I just wanted to go ahead and just show off this deck that I've been playing for a while, and that is Tierlament in the TCG. Um, I've been playing the deck ever since it got hit. I never actually got to experience the deck when it was at full power, which makes me sad because the deck is a blast. I'm actually enjoying this deck so much. Um, and I actually won one of my local tournaments, uh, and all my matchups were actually extremely meta relevant. And I thought, hey, this would be a good time to kind of talk about this deck and kind of go and talk about how it is in the upcoming format and just give, your guy, give you guys my opinion and insight on just how strong I think the deck actually is moving forward, especially if Kashtira gets hit. So um, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So to start us off here, we have, this is pretty standard right now, at least in my opinion, three Tier Limits Rhino Heart. Uh, this guy not only acts as being able to send a name and also being able to, you know, potentially fusion, um, it also acts as a starter now. It's really cool because you can send the new, if we go ahead and just throw him here, three Tier Limit Cash Tira, because when this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect, it can mill two. And I know milling two doesn't seem a lot, but for Tier Limit, that is a lot, because all it takes for you is to mill a Celiac or mill a Miller, or literally just any part of your deck, pretty much, and you are just allowed to go off. But also, Telemint Cashier is very strong because it has a quick effect in hand to summon itself out and by banishing a Telemint or Cashier card from your, if I'm correct, it is hand or graveyard. So basically, you can play during your opponent's turn, which is actually really freaking cool and actually does a lot of cool stuff. It's kind of like Havness because Havness would mill three when your opponent activated a monster effect. Uh, Telemint Cashier just has to summon itself, which is really cool. Then moving on for the other tailments, you know, we're playing the one Merle, the one Havness, and the one Sheeran. You know, they are all at one. You got to play them. You got to max out on them because it's all you're allowed to play currently. And they're all still very, very potent. I would still say right now my favorite out of them definitely has to be Sheeran because Sheeran not only unclogs your hand, but also just puts a level four on board, which can make Redoer easier and also can help you make Baron, which is really important coming up. Uh, then, you know, we got the same old, same old Ashizu package, one Keldo, one Mudor for the Shufflers, and then one Kelbeck and one Agito for the Millers. These cards honestly feel like 20 times more potent now in this format because there's a lot of just cards that you actually want to mill for your opponent in some matchups. I'm not going to lie. Um, I remember um, one of my matchups was actually against Branded, and I managed to mill all of um, their Albazes, so they actually could not resolve Branded Fusion in their hand, which was really, really fucking sick. I'm not gonna lie, it was actually really dope. But the these cards are still phenomenal. The Graveyard Shufflers are amazing, especially, you know, to dodge Expulsion. They're just phenomenal cards all around, and they're always gonna have a stay at this deck. I'm also playing just one copy of Kashtira Fenrir because we are playing the one, like the mini Kashtira engine with one Pressured Planet and then one Fenrir. Um, I don't really see a need to play more. I'm not going to lie. It's just kind of there is a consistency booster because I had two spots left in the deck and I was like, you know, why not add the field spell and add Fenrir because it's easier access to get to him in Kashtira. And also Fenrir is still just a menace on the board as well. So I think just one is nice. You can always max out on him if you can find the space for it or if you want to play 42. But right now I think that um, just one is very nice. And then, of course, you already know, three King of the Swamp. Uh, this card makes sure Rukulos, it makes sure Graffa, and it's an Aqua. That's funny enough, I never actually thought King of the Swamp would have such an important role in the deck, but right now it has such an important mainstay with Tierlman uh, as it currently is. So I highly, I actually fall in love with this card a lot. Um, I'm actually playing two Diviner. I'm playing the Diviner package. I'm not doing the Beatrice build because personally to me, I think the Beatrice build is just a little too janky for my taste um even though i am like the king of jank i love playing jank decks i just the beatrice build like with malicious and stuff just feels like it bricks a lot harder than this build in my opinion plus i like being able to use the diviner 
and summon it back off of like, let's say cross sheep or something to that effect, being able to send a miller or a shuffler, making it a level six, and then also then being able to use like a Sheeran or any level four that you have on board to make a Baron, I feel is just a lot more potent. So that's why I play the Diviner. And then I am playing a mini Shadal package. I'm playing a Squamata and Beast. This is kind of interchangeable. You could honestly play one Beast, and if you wanted to put in a second Fenrir or put in a third Diviner, you could take out the Squamata. But the reason I like having these is because they're dark. So that means you can actually hard make Garua if like one of your names gets milled and you don't want them to whiff and just kind of sit in the graveyard. So you can make a Rura link it off draw a card, which is actually very nice. Um, but these guys are very, or not Garura, sorry, my bad. Um, what's its face? Uh, do, 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 do. I can't remember the thing. Uh, I know. Yeah. Um, fucking yeah. Uh, mud dragon. Yeah. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, you can make mud dragon, which is a level four. That's what I meant to say. Uh, I was thinking of Garua for the other guys. That's my bad on that one. Um, but yeah, it's just nice as well because if you mill Squamata, like let's say with Rhino Heart, you normal summon Rhino Heart, send Taylor and Kashtira, mill two, send Squamata. It could mill Beast, which can turn into a draw one, and also just deck thins, which means that it's going to be a lot easier to hit your stuff. And it's just, in my opinion, I just really have liked the engine. It's always really performed really well so far. So I like keeping it at a one Squamata, one Beast, but it can always be interchangeable. Um, if you want to play something else. Next, of course, you know, you already know the best card in the deck, Paralino. This card is absolutely wild. I am very surprised that it's still at three. I'm not going to lie. I thought this would have been one of the cards they hit to one instead of one of like the tier names. But, you know, I'm going to take it because the card is phenomenal. Being able to search any tier limit monster and also being able to pop a card when you fusion summon is fucking wild. And then, of course, we're doing the one race oath because being able to search tier limit cash tira or Fenrir is wild. Um, usually the play that you want to do is just activate this, search Fenrir, summon Fenrir, Fenrir effect, get tier limit cash tira, and you're off to the races. Uh, for our next tier limit cards, we are playing two scream and I'm actually main decking a heartbeat right now. Um, Scream is very, very strong, mainly due to the fact that, you know, it's just on summon. If you control a tier limit monster, it just turns into a mill three. And also milling it, searching a trap is very nice. I like Ming decking the heartbeat because of the fact that you don't have to control a tier limit for it. And being able to shuffle a spell trap back into the deck is actually kind of wild. And not only that, but it lets you send a card from your hand to the graveyard and any card, which means if you draw into your Trivikarma, if you have a Miller in hand, if you have a Shuffler in hand, you can just pitch that, get it out of your hand. And then not only that, but get rid of like, let's say a problematic back or like, let's say they flip up anti-spell, you could chain heartbeat and get that out of there. Or you could, if you set this, if your opponent activates Wakashi, you can just chain heartbeat and shuffle it back into the deck, which is very, very strong. I very much love this card. Um, and honestly, the graveyard effect, being able to add a trap from grave to hand back is also very, very good. Um, for our other spells, we're playing two Foolish Burial Goods. This card's phenomenal. You can send Trivikrama to search the field spell. You can send, uh, Sullyek to search a monster. You can send, uh, Metanoise to add a great. There's just so many targets. This card feels like it's never dead, and that's what makes it phenomenal. And then for our one ofs, you know, we're playing the one Terraforming, the one Poly to search off a King of the Swamp and then the one Foolish Burial. Then for our traps, we are on two Celiac, and then one Metanoise. I feel like this is standard at this point. Um, we have Crime in our side deck. I feel like Crime isn't super great main decking. I feel like it's good side decking if you know you're going against like Kashtira or something, but main decking, it just feels like it's never live, and I just feel like it's a waste of a slot. Um, but Metanoise feels like it's always live. This card's phenomenal, and then I like having two Celiac, one for milling, and then one for adding, hopefully. Um, so that's my ratios for that. Uh, then of course we've got the one Trivakarma. You know, you banish this card from your graveyard. So search literally any of your tier limit spells or traps, basically, since all of them list Visa Starfrost, which is phenomenal. And then for the last card, we are playing three Imperm. It is a flex spot. You can do three Imperm. You could do three Troll. You could do literally anything that you want. But Imperm, honestly, uh, believe it or not, came up a lot more uh, at my tournament than, uh, anything else. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of comfortable with that, but, uh, now that super heavies are going to become a lot more popular, I feel like I'm probably going to switch this out for Droll, uh, or something else just to kind of combat that a little bit more. But all in all, that's it for the main deck. Let's go ahead and go into the extra deck here. 
you already know it's pretty much standard all around the board for most tier decks at this point. You know, you've got your one Rukalos, you've got your one Kaleidohart, and some people um, are playing two Rukalos because of the fact that, you know, Kashira again, Diabolus is in the format. Um, but I think, thankfully at my tournament, no one, uh, no one plays cash tier. We all have like an unspoken rule, which is kind of nice. But if you are, uh, going to a regional or something to that effect, I highly recommend playing two Rukalos because that way, you know, you always have one, um, and they have to be forced to kind of hit something else, or if they have to hit the Rukalos, they have to do that. Um, you still have your one Grappa because making it with the King of the Swamp is wild. And this card also works a lot because since it is... Uh, discarding for a card effect your a lot of your stuff is actually going to resolve in the deck like any of your tier names it's just a phenomenal card uh, guardian chimera because you know you have poly in the deck with king of the swamp and you can also just hard make it a lot of the times which is very strong uh, the one winda because you know you're playing your shadals so this card actually comes up a lot just being able to make it on your opponent's turn is very very crazy uh, the one drago stapelia the one Mud Dragon of the Swamp, and the one Garura. So that's it for our fusions. Uh, for some of the next ones, for our XCs, we've got a Baguska and a Time Thief Redoer. Uh, believe it or not, um, I honestly have wanted to just cut out Baguska because today I actually did not play, or at the tournament I didn't play Baguska. This was a Zeus, but I was borrowing it at the time. Um, I honestly just like Redoer and Zeus, I'm not gonna lie, uh, it just feels a lot nicer. Um, Baguska is a very strong card though if you're trying to kind of stall, or um, if let's say you just need that little bit of time to be able to get your hand online. But honestly, I do like Redoer and Zeus a little bit more, but Redoer and Baguska works just fine. Uh, then for the one sinker, we are playing Baron because you make this a lot. I, I When I say that, anytime you see Diviner, on your field or in your graveyard, you are going to make Baron uh, because of the fact that Cross Sheep can just bring back Diviner, or if you just normal summon Diviner, it's this card is phenomenal, especially in this deck because of the fact that it's you actually can use the standby phase a lot and get a lot of value out of it, like summoning back a tier limit cash tier, then milling more cards. It, it's just such a fantastic card. Uh, then for our links, we've got the one dark, you know, you, your entire deck is pretty much like a lot of darks and just being able to bring back something like a bestial from your opponent or something is very nice. Uh, then we've got our Sprite Sprint. This card comes up a lot because your Merly is a level two. And also there are some times where you find yourself sending Diviner off of this as well, um, because just getting it to, getting it to the graveyard is very important. Uh, then we've got Cross Sheep phenomenal card this card is actually so important i i love this card with all my heart uh it's just actually phenomenal in here and then we've got underworld goddess uh this card outs the pearly uh noir which can be pretty problematic and also just any other towers-esque like you know if you're playing against like a rogue deck that's making a towers like adding mist or something being able to just kind of sack it off with underworld goddess is honestly phenomenal um all in all with the extra deck there are a lot of things that you can change in here I mean, there are a lot of fusion targets. You can cut out some of them if you honestly want to. I've seen some people honestly stray away from playing Drago Stapelia now. Uh, I've even seen some people maybe like siding the fusion guys or some people not even playing the Shadal package. It's all personal preference. Um, the extra deck is very tight with tier limit right now, I would say, because there are just so many different variants that you can play. Um, cause I know some people are doing the Draco Sack Cherubini, again, the Beatrice lines, there are just so many different things that you could do and it all just comes up to personal preference and whatever the format dictates. Um, I'll go ahead and go over my side deck. It's not too crazy, but I'll just go over it real quick. It's not finished by any means because, um, I just, uh, this deck was something that I didn't expect to play. So I didn't have a lot of the side cards for it. Um, but we've got three Gamma Seal, uh, Kaiju outs a lot of problematic cards, and not only that, but it's an Aqua, which is very, 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 very important. And speaking of Droll, I actually have it in the side deck. Um, this was just depending on if I was going against something that added more. Um, because the, the one thing with Droll that I want people to understand is it can 
hurt you a little bit with tier. If you activate this on your opponent's turn and you start playing on their turn with milling a lot, it will turn off your Sully X and it will turn off your Screams or just anything that you mill that you could potentially get any kind of value off of. It can it can hurt a little bit. That's why I don't main it. And I don't know if I will main deck it. I just find that uh, Imperm or even Cypher, Cypher and Gamma would just be a lot better to main deck than Droll when it comes to tier limit. Um, but of course, it's again, personal preference. Uh, then for some of our spells, we've got the Harpy's Feather Duster for back row and then Super Poly uh, being able to combat you know, just some other, just like problematic things, uh, is just very strong. And then I do only have 13 cards on my side because again, I wasn't properly prepared. Uh, so we've got the one tier limits crime. And then this is a, a tech that I find very spicy, uh, two mischief of the gnomes. This card is actually underrated as hell because of the fact that, um, you mill this to the graveyard. It has a graveyard effect. You can banish this card from the graveyard. This turn reduces the levels of all monsters in each player's hand by one, even after they are summoned or set. The reason that this card is very strong is because against Sprite um, or Cash Tira, this card is very, very solid. Um, a lot of the times it can just kind of end their turns. Um, Cash Tira is a little bit iffy. It all depends on their hand. You know, if they have like uh, if they have Theosis or if they have like ways to get a lot, a lot of level sevens on board, then, you know, it's not going to be phenomenal, but, um, it is just like something cute. To, uh, it's mainly for Sprite or, uh, even Achuria. Uh, sometimes it comes up for them as well, but mainly for Sprite, uh, cause that was what I played today as one of my matchups and I activated this on them and they actually just had to end, end their turn. And then I just proceeded to OTK them. Um, it's just a neat little card. Of course, uh, there are two other spots, uh, in the side deck. So you could easily take this out for something else if you wanted to, but it's just something funny. I came up with last second and actually put in a lot of work today, but just to kind of talk about my matchups today, uh, I went against, um, I went against branded, uh, Despia with the new cards, uh, from Syac. I went against Sprite and I went against Gold Pride Punk. Um, believe it or not, Tierlament actually can play through the Gimmick Puppet Lock very, very easily. Um, I wouldn't, ex you wouldn't really expect that, but, um, Tierlament can because of the fact that Tierlament just has so much potential to set up to play on your opponent's turn. And that's what makes it so strong is the fact that I just, what I did is when they would summon the puppet, I would just, for instance, like, um, we would, I would just activate Paralino, get Telemann, Cash Tira, and then just set up to be able to just mill like a bunch of cards on their follow-up turn. And then I would just proceed to play like it was my turn, you know, your turn, our turn. Uh, and then for Sprite, Mischief of the Gnomes put in a lot of work. And then for Gold Pride Punk, uh, the deck just didn't really do too much against this. Uh, Telemann just kind of, I kind of just steamrolled it. Uh, so all in all, that's the deck. Uh, let me know what you guys think, by the way, of the in-person deck profiles. I don't know how the audio quality is going to be because it's on my phone. Uh, my phone isn't, uh, you know, it's not awful, but it's not the craziest thing either. But um, again, just let me know what you guys think. And let me know what you think of the deck profile. Let me know if you guys are playing tier limit and what you all recommend for the build and stuff. Right now, I'm pretty comfortable with this. But, you know, the extra deck, again, is something I want to fiddle around a little bit more. But thank you guys again so much for watching this video. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!